continue on <coughs> with reviewing the user interface elements that the ASP.NET framework um, provides to you. And what I'm going to do, we'll get back to our sample application, but we're going to take a slight detour and talk about nesting master pages. Now what do I mean by nesting master pages? I mean by putting a master page inside a master page. Why would you do that? You would do that if you had, for example, some content that was on every page. And then you had some content that varied from section to section to section. And we can look at LC's site for an example of that, uh, of what I mean. If we navigate around LC site, we'll see this and this is constant on every page. So I don't know how they built this, but this could have been put in a master page if they used uh, ASP.NET. So if we go to any page. We get this and we get this. This and this. All right. Now, within different sections, though, this varies. So within my current student section, let's go here. All right. This is one thing within, say, community services, this is something else. So we have, and again, it, I may have misspoke a little bit about that. It might not be within community services. It might be other. But, but the point is that there's groupings of pages that have the same secondary navigation. So all the pages have the same banner, search, main navigation, and news. Then groups of pages have different stuff over here. They all have something over there, but the exact details of it varies from section to section. Here on the associate's degree and certificate programs, we see academic programs, associates of individual studies, and so on. If we were to go to Stocker Center, we get a different set of pages over here. And those pages stay constant for everything in the Stocker Center section. All right? So that would be done by nesting master pages. So let's go in and let's create a real quick nested example. I don't necessarily know if you would need to do this for your project, but if you did want to know how to do it in your project, this is how you do it. All right. So I'm going to go and create file, new, website. Empty website, C sharp, all righty. I will put it on the desktop and call it nested. And I will go in and create a new file. Master page. That I'm just going to put the banner on. I'm not going to make this a very elegant example. But. Hopefully. 
it'll demonstrate this. So I'm going to put, again, in my page, my banner. anything else that we would want. All right. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a master page for Stocker and I'm going to create a master page for academic divisions. All right. So I'll go file, new, file, and I'm going to pick a master page and I'm going to say I still, you know, I want, to, I want this master page to inherit from another master page. And so I click Add, and I only have one, so the choice is easy. I click OK. And now I'm given the content areas from the main master page that I can put my stuff in. So I'm going to put a nav, and I'm going to put in here navigation area for Stocker. Now, I have to put in a placeholder so that the pages that clone from this master page have a place to put their stuff. So I'm going to say <coughs> content placeholder Stocker. I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to create a second master page that clones off the main one. Shame on me, by the way, for calling that master page 2. I should have called it stocker master page. It, it really does pay to use descriptive names of things instead of doing that. I, can you rename I, it now? Um, you probably can, but that can be a pain. In, that can be a pain. To do it that way. Usually, what I do is, if I haven't gone far, I'll delete it and recreate it. Hold the dark points later. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We'll give you a second chance to hand it in. There you go. So now you put two, your second master page inside your. Yeah, this I'm putting the second master page and uh, in the first one, and I'm calling this. Oh shoot. That's, 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 that's a good name. This is pretty descriptive. All right. And this is in the navigation area for academic. All right. So I have my three master pages. Now I need to start cloning them. All right. So I'll create my main stocker page and my main academic page. So I'll go New, File, Web Form, and I'll call this Stocker. Select Master Page. See, I have to think, was that two or three? It would have been nice if they were named correctly. So I'm going to pick two. And now notice I have that one content placeholder that existed in its master page. So you can fill in the, the content placeholder on your associated with your master page. This master page only has that one, right? The original had two, and therefore on the Stocker master page, I have a chance to fill in two of those. So I'm going to put content for main 
factor page. All right, and then I'll do the same thing for academics, new file, web form. academic and I'll put main content for academic page. Alright, so now if I go and run this and again I can select it or I can make this sort of my apps home page by saying set a start page and run it We'll notice that the contents of this page comes from three different places. Some of the content comes from my first master page. Some of the content comes from a secondary master page. And then some of the content comes from the page itself. So it pieces together everything. Remember, what gets delivered to the client? HTML page. Some of those pieces come from the master page, some of those pieces came from the stock or the academic master page, and some of it came from the page itself. So, if there's a change I wanted to make to every single page on my site, I would change the main master page. If there was a change I needed, I wanted to make to just all the stocker pages, I would go in and change the stocker one. If there was a change I wanted to do to just the academic, I would just change that. Yes? So you want to make basically the, the main outline on the master page and do all the individual differences within the individual page? Program? If you have them. Okay. I mean, in, in thinking of a project, um, I'll think, we'll think about projects in general, then we'll think about your project for, for this uh, class. Projects in general, it's pretty clear you're going to have at least one master page, right? Because, you know, the whole point of good web design, one of the primary principles is that there's a consistency in the way the site looks and acts and, and so on. That you don't call something one thing on one page and call it something else on another page. And the navigation's in the same place and et cetera. All right? So, it's pretty much a given you're going to have one. Whether you have a secondary one or not depends on if you have chunks of pages that sort of work as a section and you want those to have a consistent look. Like exactly like we saw on a larger site like LCC, we have an academic section, we have a stocker section, we have a faculty and staff section. And those pages go beyond, they, they look like all the other pages, but they also have another thing that's in common. And that's where you'd go and create the secondary master pages and nest them like that. So for like a smaller project, like for what you're doing in this class, probably one master page is sufficient. All right. However, however, it's not unheard of to have pages that have separate sections and have each section has some common code with all the other pages in the section that all the pages across the site don't share. So you could create a couple different master pages. Questions? Yes. Can you make a page that you've already created a master page? If you didn't set it as a master page to begin with? Um, what I would do, given that scenario, is I would create a new master page and then just cut and paste stuff from oh. there and there. Gotcha. Um, could you do it? Eh, I don't know. I never tried, but... I'm guessing that that would just be as, as easy. Because really, what's the difference between it? Well, it's identified as a master page. It has a different file extension. Um, it still has a code behind, so you could have code on a master page too. But it has those content placeholders, which is where the pages that clone it, you get to put the stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. Question. Well, is there anything size-wise that we have to watch out for when we're putting master within master? Um, my guess would be that your sanity would be would give before the framework would. In other words, if you had master pages nested 10 deep, my guess is the framework would probably handle it pretty well, but you'd go crazy trying to keep it sorted in your own head. So for this one, 
from the example you used, that thing is just going to go down the, the left hand side of the page. So would you just have Re the, repeat that? Well, you're you're saying that they that you could use a different a different master for that one section. Yes. So then it, that how how do you keep that straight? That's in my how do you keep says. what straight? Um, <coughs> are you just using that particular like navigation div or something? Well, I would look at and I would analyze. If I was doing this, I would I would sketch out, you know, we have a finished website that I'm trying to sort of emulate a little bit. Maybe not the exact appearance, but the, the, the philosophy in it. But if you were sketching out your pages, you might look and say, gee, these eight pages all kind of look the same. They have the same banner as every, page, every other page, but they also have uh, a secondary section that all these pages have in common that the rest of the pages on the site don't. So I'm gonna, I don't want to have to change that repeatedly in every page, so I'm going to just go and make a master page for that. So it's all based on, I mean, it's driven based on the content and how you want your pages to look. And if there's commonality between chunks of pages, you can make a secondary master page. Um, Getting back to Dave's question, you know, I mean, I kind of stand by my original comment. In other words, to go much deeper than a few, I think you'd really have to be trying hard to sort of shoehorn it, and at some point you say, gee, this is reusable enough, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, pra the practical trumps maybe theoretical concerns. Other questions? Okay. Now, how would we get this to look the way we wanted to? We'd do it by styling, right? We could have a style sheet that would make it look. Because right now, I mean, I, I totally ignored the style, but it'd be easy to see how I could put a style in there to style the navigation section and all that to make it look the way that I, I wanted it to do. And again, the nice thing is if I want to change every page on my site, I change the main master page. If I want to change just the page in one section, I change the master page for that particular section. All right, we're going to look at some other navigational elements that can help you. All right, getting back to, let's download the example from last time. Excuse me, but if you do a master page, typically your master page is going to be the contents of that is going to be the header and the footer? It's going to be the common content. It's going to be the content that you want on every page. So typically, yeah, the header and footer are probably good choices for being in there. But you could have the navigation. You could have a new section. Like, again, if you look at LC's page, you know, what do all pages on this site have in common, regardless of where we go? It has this in common, it has this in common, and it has this in common. Right. So it's all based on the common content. And is that common content for everything, or is, it that, or is it common content um, just for certain sections of the site? Excuse me. It looks like there's one for this particular look with the, the blue bar, <coughs> that big... <coughs> well, uh, again, again, I, I'm sort of doing the reverse engineering here. I have no idea how this was written. So, um, what I'm saying is, I'm pointing out how they could have, if they use ASP.NET, use master pages. I have no way of knowing for sure how they've done it. Did you have a question? Um, I, I think I kind of answered it myself, but I it was going back to HTML coding. Uh -huh. With CSS styling, because um, I've always contemplated the, the purpose of a DID container versus uh -huh. just giving something an ID. Would you DID something to hold multiple things in one container? A div is a container. Yeah. Right. So um, you use so, that for multiple, but if you so, want to just implement, like, if it was just one thing, you wouldn't have to put it inside a container. You could just use the ID. 
Well, well, let, let's 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 talk about that. That that actually is like you know. I'll try to give the the short answer to that because a long answer to that um, would probably take a few class sessions. All right. The the short answer to that is yes. A div is a container. All right. And therefore, the idea is it's going to hold a few different things. Right. So it is a container to hold stuff. And if you truly only wanted one element, there's no need to put that element in a div. You could just style that one element with an ID, with a, with an ID or with other things. Okay. All right. That being said, um, you have the ability uh, with, with the HTML5 tags. You have the ability to more precisely define what each section means. All right. Prior versions of HTML, there was only the div as a container for, uh, as a block container for elements. Now we have the header. Now we have the footer. Now we have these other things. So those are like preset. Those are like preset uses of divs. Instead of this one generic, I got a container, you know, it's like here's a container for navigation. Here's a <coughs> container for header. I may put something in a header tag, even if it was only one thing, just because the thought is, is later on down the line, I might have some other chunk of code that I would want conceptually to be part of the header. So I'm going to say, this container is my header section. Right now, maybe it only has one thing, but I could easily see expanding it. And your styling then, with your selectors in CSS, your styling allows you to not use IDs as often as you used to. You can still use them, but you, what you used to often use IDs for was, was you'd say, take this div with an ID of nav and treat it this way. Well, now you have a nav tag for that, so, so you don't need to say div with an ID of nav. All right. Let's look at some other things that we have. There's three other things that we want to cover, and I don't know if we'll get to them all today or not, but if there's a little bit to wrap up on um, <coughs> Thursday, then so be it. Excuse me. The things that I want to cover, I want to cover menus. All right. I probably should know the other two, right? Breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. You just have to draw out menus. Yeah, I, I want. Yeah, okay. That, there you go. I want to. I want to cover menus. I want to cover site maps, and I want to cover breadcrumbs. Thank you. Kitty supporters today. This might be the day for for Keith Richards to run wild. I read on Wikipedia that uh, they expect Hello Kitty to make seventeen billion dollars this year. Really? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. And all it really is is a picture that they put on. Right. Right. Yeah. Items. Right. It, it, yeah. Hello. Hello Kitty is innovative in that. Um, usually what they do is they take in a market stuff, like Mickey Mouse was a cartoon character, and then they, they put him on t-shirts and sold the mousers and all that, but he started out like doing something, and then they marketed. Yeah, she's got a Hello Kitty coffee mug. But yeah, Hello Kitty was strictly created to market. It's not like there was a Hello Kitty amusement park or, or, <laughs> or a TV but show or books. Be. Yeah, but there might be, yeah. But it was created with the thought in mind to market it. And it worked. Yeah, and it worked. And I was going to say, and before we, we laugh and say how dumb it is, uh, I'm thinking the maker of that probably 
probably just wiped his butt with a hundred dollar bill. I don't want to. I don't want to speculate on that, but I guarantee. I guarantee he doesn't have a back window knocked out of his car that he hasn't replaced it in a year and a half, like some of us do. That reminds me, winter's coming. I better get that heavy duty plastic and tape it up uh, real good. So one of my colleagues told me, he's like, look, I'll give you the couple of hundred bucks, just get the thing fixed. You know? And it's like, that's yeah, okay. All right, so refresh our memory from last time. We had a master page. For this one, I suppose, again, it's, it's a matter of how far we want to take this. We could have created a Hello Kitty master and a Keith Richards master to make them look different, but we're not going to go to that extreme. We have this sort of simple navigation. Oh, I don't have my vote page. And I went there and I overrided the CSS on the Keith Richards page. All right. Now what I want to do, let me make the vote page, just to review making a, uh, um, um, a um, new page clone from a master page. And then I will remove the extra styling from the Keith Richards uh, page, just to make this more of how we would actually do this. So I'll go in here, say File, New file, <coughs> web form, I'll call it vote, select master page, pick my master page. Notice again now that we only have access to the content placeholder. And same thing if we view it in design view. I don't think I did this last time, but if I go in design view, notice it's showing me with the little glyph there that I can't make changes there because that belongs to the master page. I could only put stuff here because that's where the content area lives. But you could add more containers and stuff like that, right? I would have to add yeah, them to the good. master page. Oh, no, no, he's saying within, within that content placeholder. You within that content placeholder, want. I could put in as much HTML as I wanted. You can add to, you just can't take away from, right? Correct. I could add as much HTML as I wanted to within that. Okay. I just could only add it in this particular spot. Okay. All right, and I could not take away any of the other stuff. So I'll go here into the source view, and I will say h2... Vote. So is this assumable then that you could have multiple code behinds then as well? Yes. So there, there could be a code behind for your master page that does master page things. Yeah. All right. Uh, you could then have a code behind for your specific page that does specific page things. But, but if, say, you had code behind on the first one, which I believe you do, this would this would inherit everything from that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you get the code behind, too. Um, you can even, the, the thing that, that you can do, but it's a little tricky, is that you can write code in your specific page to address stuff on the master page. You can't do the other way around, I don't think, because that master page is going to be inherited by a bunch of specific pages. So you can't write any code to address a specific page because you don't know which one. All right? When you say stuff, what do you mean by stuff? Addressing code or addressing objects? Um, what I mean is I could manipulate the objects on the master page by having a code behind on a specific page. So if I had, if I had a news section, for example, on the master page. I could manipulate that to pull news specific to Keith Richards or Hello Kitty if I wanted to do it that way. Okay. Here we go. And 
I'll go in here and I'll remove the styling. That didn't look like it went right. So now we should have stuff working. All right. So now we have all the pages looking the same and we don't get an error when we go to our vote page. All right. The menu. How did you make all the pages look the same again? Because I created a master page and all the pages that I created were inherited from the master page. Right, but before the Keith Richards page. Oh, because I had, I had style codes specifically in the Keith Richards page. And Only in the Keith Richards page. So I went and removed that code. That's what you just deleted? That's what I just deleted, yeah. Did you delete it from the vote page or did you? Uh, there, it wasn't in the vote page to begin with. The, there was a question last time, after, after I made the, pay, the site to look like this, there was a question of what if I wanted one page to look a little different? And I said, well, you could write a style just for that page to make it look a little bit different. And that was the example that I gave. Okay, and when you just went back, did you go back to that page? I, I went back to the page and just deleted Delete. the specific okay. style. I right. thought you did it from the vote page. No, no, I, I clicked over. The vote page never had it in it because I didn't put it in it. Right. I just created it now. All right, the master page. We have this and we have our navigation which is a series of links. Now, what I can do is I can actually use a, a um, uh, menu objects that are available in ASP.NET Framework to get sort of a nice consistent uh, menu um, for this. So, Let's say, for example, um, let's add a couple more pages to this. We won't do a bunch of pages, but I do need to do a couple more uh, pages to um, illustrate my point. So let's add a Hello Kitty gallery, and let's store. add, pardon me? Hello Kitty store. Hello Kitty store, Hello Kitty gallery, and Hello Kitty biography. <laughs> so I'll go in and I'll say new file, web form, HK store, select master page, got it, go in file, new, file, HK bio, and finally, New file HK gallery. All right. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some code in here simply to tell us what page we're on. So Hello Kitty Gallery. Hello Kitty Bio and Hello Kitty Store. <coughs> now I need to add this to the navigation. All right. So the navigation lives on the master page. So I can close these guys down and open up the master page. go in here and make the changes. But let's think about what we're moving towards. In making good navigation, you know, nav good navigation consists of a couple different things. First of all, making it obvious that these are in fact the links on your site. That's an important thing, right? 
But also important is proper organization. So, if I emulated what I'm doing here, I could have a home page. Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty Store. Hello Kitty Bio. Hello Kitty Gallery. Keith Richards, and presumably I'd have the same thing for him, and then vote. If I made my menu like that, could I do better than making my menu like that? Yeah. 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 How would how could I do better? Just do a little drop down from the from Hello Kitty and Keith Richards, right? Okay. That's so what I could do is I could do something like this. I could have Home, Hello Kitty, Keith Richards, Vote, and then when they moused over Keith Richards, I could say Store, Bio, and Gallery. When they moused over Keith Richards, I'd see the same thing for him. All right? So that's a, I, would, I would say that this is pretty clearly, this is a better navigation than that. Because really, these things logically sort of go underneath that, right? I mean, these are sort of a subdivision of this guy, right? So I would make it that way. Likewise, I do the same thing with Keith Richards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. Now, to do these drop-down menus is a combination of... HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? HTML because they're links, they're HTML code. JavaScript because there's a behavior involved. That is, there's interactivity. I put my mouse on something, something appears. I move my mouse off of it, something disappears. And then finally, CSS because I want a very specific look for this. All right? So let's go in. And we could write, or we could go in rather, let me rephrase that. We could go in and I could write the code that does this. But how many websites have navigations? Mm, all of them, all right? And many of them have navigations that work this way. It's a nice way to be able to organize the content without taking up a lot of space. All right. So, I have four links on my top level, and then I have three links and three links as sort of sub-levels underneath Hello Kitty and Keith Richards. That's better than having ten links all on the top level. It's much better organized. There's a control that will allow us to do that and do it easily. And there's actually a couple controls that we can use, and we'll play around with both of them. But I'm going to start out with a menu control. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to delete my navigation, the, the series of links that I have already. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to pull over under navigation a menu. I'm going to put it right there in the nav section. Now, this is similar to a drop down, right? Remember when we created a drop down or when we created radio button controls? We specified some items. We specified items and values for those items. We can do the same thing here. There's choose data source, which we can, we, can, we can actually get the series of links from somewhere else, from a database or from an XML file. Static or dynamic. We'll play with that. 
and there's edit menu items. So I'm going to click to add a menu item. And this is the root menu item. These are going to be the things that are on the top of my link structure. All right. So I'm going to say for this, I'm going to say, this is my home page. And the navigate URL is default.aspx. I always do that. I'm going to edit menu items again. And I'm going to click add. And again, this is going to be the Hello Kitty. Navigate URL. What do you think the next root item is going to be? It's going to be Keith Richards. All right, because remember, this is on the top level. We're going to put things underneath Hello Kitty. That's not at the root level. So I'll go in here and say Keith Richards. Vote. What were you clicking on to add those? The little plus sign that says add root item. Now, I can rearrange this if I wanted to. If I wanted to switch the order of Keith Richards and Hello Kitty, I could do that or that. But, what I can do now is I can, instead of clicking add a root item, I can click add a child item. And what that will do is that will put underneath Hello Kitty the three other pages that are associated with Hello Kitty. So I can click add child item, and notice it's indented, which sort of shows that it's like a hierarchy. And I can say store. Navigate URL, pick HK store. Add child again. Bio. Hello Kitty Bio. Add child again. This is way easier than coding it all. Yep. Kind of wish I could redo your HTML. Well, what's better is, is, again, with the notion of the master pages, if you remember, for your HTML project, if you decided the day before you're going to turn it in, you're going to add another page to it or get rid of a page, you'd have to go on every single page and get rid of it from the navigation or add it to the navigation. Whereas here, you would just make the change to the master page. All right, so now let's go and run this. And if you notice, it is horizontal. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not horizontal, it's vertical. I don't like that. So there's a property for that. If I look under menu. Maintainability. Maintainability. Orientation vertical. I can say I want it to be oriented horizontally. So now when I run it, I get this oriented that way. Looks like you need some styling there. Little issue there because there's some styling there. All right. I can see the store bio in, in gallery, but the background is see through. All right. That, it's pointing it onto the other. It's your, the, your, your container's not large enough for that. It's, it looks like it's just pointing it. Is there a problem with the background color of the drop down? That way, when it clicks up, it's a 
No, but it's not. It's not allowing. You don't want that anyway, because even if you were to change the background, it's you're 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 bleeding over onto your. I've content. seen sites that you do need that. to set the the container to. Uh, well, that's normal though when you have a drop down like that. that. So if you change the background to that to say white, you wouldn't see the whole portion of that anymore. That portion's normal. Right. If you used a Z index, you could just have everything hop on top. We'll just let tell you. We have to. We're using a Z index now. Right, right, it's implied. And that's not going to do any good because it's going to be on top, but you're still going to be able to see it through because this guy has a transparent background. Now, to your question, to make, what is wrong with the answer, make the container bigger? Gee, I, I, it was kind of a loaded question, right? You don't know how big all of the drop Well, you don't necessarily know how big all of it is. You might change it. You might change it. And that's the whole benefit of using these drop-downs, is it doesn't take up that real estate, right? If I wanted to code this so that it always showed everything, then I'd just have a big old navigation. I wouldn't bother doing this. The whole purpose of the drop-down is that you can get more stuff in without taking up extra space. So, what I would say the correct answer is, is we just need to style it so that we can see, <laughs> and I know that probably ruined Alan's day, but yeah. So we're going to style it. We're going to style it so that we can, uh, we have a different color background for that. Because that's the problem now, right? So what can I do? Well, I can look at, again, how would I begin to style it? Remember, my answer to that question is always going to be about the same. Pardon me? Maybe. I said style sheet. <laughs> style sheet, that's true. But I'm going to look at the HTML, right? The whole point of CSS is you need something to hook onto, right? You need something in the HTML to hook onto. And it might be the ID, or it might be the class, or it might be something else. But we need something to hook onto. So let me go and view the source of this and see the source that gets generated here. All right? I am within my nav section, all right? And within my nav section, there is a UL for level one with a class of level one. There is a UL with a, oh, I'm sorry, a, a LI with class of level one, class of level two, and all that, all right? Another UL for the second layer. That's a class of level two. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that if I put in here, if I put in here a, no, a style rule, that says ULs within the nav section get this as their background. I'm thinking that might work. Or maybe LIs. Let's try it. What's the worst that will happen? Could you do a level one or level two? I could, but I really it really doesn't matter what I want all those ULs to look the same, so I could I could do that. So yeah, you you could whatever you use as your hook, you have available to you. So can you change the name of that to whatever you want? Can I change the name of let's what? Let's say right now you decide you're going to change the name of that level one and level two to something you want. Will it still? Will it um, still I do not see anywhere where I can change that. I think that gets generated. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I'm no. just thinking if you had a reason you wanted to know a special name you, or ID or whatever. Could you just do items? In, what do you mean items? In CSS, couldn't you just change the items background? Okay. And well, what's the HTML that I would change then? I, I need a new one. I, it, it would be an LI again. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't know. Okay, so let's go in here and let's say 
I'm going to get rid of that ugly background on the div, or the ugly border on the div. Let's get rid of the borders altogether. Yeah, bring the borders. <laughs> uh, so we'll go nav, li, and I'll say background pink. Oops. All right. And let's see what this does for us. That was my point was before was that you're still going to bleed into your content. That was my that was what I was saying. Right. And and, and my point like that, yeah. and my point was I want to bleed into my content. That looks tough. Right? Yeah. Pardon me? That to me, I saw how I'm doing. Like, I'm, so you would have a gigantic no, wasted I space. Figure something out. What, well, one of two things. Yeah. One of two things. Either it's going to go over, or you're going to have to allocate the space for it. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. So you're going to have a big wasted space. Is there a property, like a dynamic property on that? Could you write JavaScript to make your content jump down? Yeah, I, I could. I don't think I want to do that either. You, you can make a, what I've seen is like a vertical menu. And when you clicked on Hello Kitty, those other items would show up underneath it. And they jump down. You could implement a gap in between those two containers and make it maybe look like Alan wants. But why would you do that? Is why would I waste the space? Right. That's the whole point. It goes over. That's the whole point, is yeah. that it doesn't take up the space. Dude, if you're on the Best Buy website, it does just that. It goes over everything. This is pretty standard. And I, yeah, I'd say this is pretty standard. I mean, a drop-down on a form does the same thing, right? You pick a, you pick a drop-down, the, the items go down, it covers up the rest of the form. So this is pretty standard behavior. All right. So this is a menu, and again, I have different things that I could do with this in terms of the properties and in terms of the styling and so on. Why was that? Oh, okay. Never mind. All right. Let's make a... No, never mind. You could probably set the width of those, right, so that they would be more separated. Yep. How would you do that? You have to see, kind of. Right. Yeah, that would be nice. Should do it. My point is, is this is the first example that I would argue that it's pretty tricky to figure out how to style it. Because when you go and look at this, you don't know how many levels are going to be in the menu in advance. So things like classes and so on might not be a good choice. And this is where you really need to, in my opinion, look at the HTML to figure out what it's doing. So, in this case, what I did is they already have generated some style code in here to handle that. But what I can do is I've noticed that, hey, regardless of what I want to do, I want to hit the LIs that are in the navigation section. Now, with the, the contents of that drop-down, if you wanted to do that individually, would that be nav, li, li? What do you mean do it individually? Well, oh, right now you have a uniform paint for the whole... Oh, menu. good question. If I wanted to have this white, let's say, um, or 
whatever. White, whites, whites. Yeah, if I wanted to do that. That's a good question. What would I have to do? Let's try that. I think you're right, but... Well, you could have it do like a lighter pink, let's say. Right. It's not a good example, but... So that it looks a little different. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Well, this one makes sure the top level ones are oh, okay. pink. Yeah. This one makes sure that the second level ones are red. So, yeah, it sort of does that. But then if we had a third level, we could go and, oh, excuse me, we could go and do that one as well. talk about a tree view. What's the difference between a tree view and a menu? Tree view go. Yeah, tree view is kind of like what you at least used to get in Windows Explorer, which I don't know where you'd even find that anymore. Just start typing Explorer. I just use this as a search menu anymore. Nice. As long as you're on here and you just start, or you could probably have put Windows Explorer. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you're on that screen, you can just start typing and it'll search for whatever you're looking for. You can also just push the Windows key on it. File Explorer. Are there any files on this machine? You can just click the little file on the taskbar too. This PC. That's what I wanted. Okay. I'm still waiting for a new version of Windows to fix like, the messed up like one. You won't, you won't see any exchange out Windows 8. Uh, uh, uh. It's going to be more similar to 8 anyway, than 7 or 9. So my, my mother in law got a touch screen computer with Windows 8 on it. It's actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Well, it, Windows Explorer used to work like this. <laughs> Where you can where you can you can expand or hide different nodes of the tree. Click on local disk C up there on that bar and then where it says this PC, click on local disk. That's it. That's the root. Right, but I'm not seeing I can't expand. You're looking to expand one of those folders. One of the folders and, and, the folders and then see out. the other folders underneath it. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible in this. Whatever. Forget it about it. It should do it. Yeah, it should, but I'm, I'm too tired. something in those other yeah. folders. It used to be easy. It used to be easy, yeah. <laughs> the point is, is with the tree view. Question? No, I was just saying, you just do that right Visual Studio and all that. If you go to the box where it still does Visual Studio. Oh, okay. The first, the first thing you do. Yeah, there we go. Right there. Here? Yeah. Right, right. That's what you're looking for, right? That's what you're looking for, right? Yeah. I guess this, you're not really, because these two aren't, that's not really a tree. Because, <laughs> well, because ASP.X and these two are really, they're paired together.
Um, well, if you had the app code folder. If I did, then, then that would be a case if I had a bunch of those. But, but I think if you went to the, well, even the file menu. Oh, get folks, it. I give up on this. I think we, I think we know where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've seen trees before. We've okay. seen trees before, right. We used to see trees. So, um, you can open up uh, nodes and you can leave them open. So you can expand or you can contract nodes at, at will. And that's nice because the menu doesn't just stay there while you're mousing over it. You can click on it and see the list of options, and then you get to decide when the, when the thing closes, as opposed to um, it closing it when, when you move over. So it's a different kind of navigation element. Um, it, it shows uh, the full hierarchy more. Um, it gives you the ability to see the full hierarchy as opposed to just the hierarchy drilling down in one section. For that to work, or, or let me rephrase this, we could create a tree view exactly like we created a, a menu view here by just adding the items. It would look exactly the same, and that would be something for you to try and lab, to experiment with that. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a sitemap XML file. And we are going to combine our tree view. We're going to make a little mini sitemap for this guy. And we're going to combine our tree view with the sitemap file so that we have a sitemap page that shows a hierarchy of how this is structured. Sitemap is a great example of something where you might want to be able to see the whole hierarchy all at once. In addition, we're going to do breadcrumbs. All right. In order to do this, we're going to create an XML file. All right. What is an XML file? Extensible markup language is basically just uh, a list of commands or, or, or markup, similar to HTML, and bring how you want to position things and how you want to put things on. Page. Okay. Um, where have we seen an XML file so far in this class? We saw it in the web config file. The web config file is a file that is an XML file. What does it mean to say it's an XML file? It means that it shows a hierarchy or structure of data and is represented through the use of tags and attributes. So in that regard, it's very similar to HTML. HTML was sort of derived from XML. Notice that just like in HTML, we have tags. We have attributes on tags. We have nesting of tags. We have starting tags and we have ending tags. So all those concepts that exist in HTML also exist in XML. And and the idea of XML, the extensible part, means that you can define an XML layout for any kind of data that you want. HTML is, is a semi-XML format defined to describe the structure and content of a web page. The web config file is an XML file that gives parameters for an ASP.NET web application. Our sitemap XML file is going to be a XML file that describes the structure and the hierarchy of the pages in our site. And that what, what we're going to do then is we're going to use that for two things. We're going to use that because we can actually then go and bind that XML file to a tree view. So I don't have to write those elements individually like I did when I created the menu. I create the XML file, and I simply point the visual control to the XML file. And that's going to be a key thing going forward, the notion of data binding. The notion that you have something visual, and you have a source of the data, and you bind those two together so that the visual control gets its data from the data source. We're also going to use it for breadcrumbs. And what breadcrumbs are, are simply an indication of where you are on the site's hierarchy. 
So I think we saw that on LC's page. If we go to We go here we see that we started off from home we went to the Stocker Art Center and now we're on the LC film series page so that is useful for navigation good navigation should tell you where you are where you've been and where else you can go well this tells you where you are the breadcrumbs do that where you've been you came from the Stocker page and the navigation on the side shows us the other places that you can go to. So we'll build an XML file first, and then we will create a tree view from it, and then we will create the breadcrumbs from it. And then we'll have this section of the class wrapped up. All right. Our next big topic after that is databases. And we'll start off doing a review of databases, and then we'll get into We'll kind of simultaneously review database concepts and then talk about how to use them within an ASP.NET. Um, the stuff that we've done so far in a large degree has been um, preparatory to, to this phase because this is where really the fun starts. All right. At this, at this time, <laughs> the lecture portion of the class has been completed. We now enter phase two, which is the lab portion. All right.